The definition of a maverick is unorthodox or independent-minded. Dapper Dan is the epitome of what this award embodies. He is more than a designer. His life inspires us to go through the window if the door is closed. He never stopped at no, and neither should we. Dapper Dan, when we met in 2014, you just got me. You understood me. You got the vision of HFR right away. You and your family have become my family. Thank you for inspiring me and everyone in this room to be Mavericks. And before I present Mr. Dapper Dan with his HFR Lifetime Maverick Award, a few people wanted to say congratulations. Dapper Dan, congratulations on your Lifetime Maverick Award. You know what I'm saying? What you've done for the culture has been uh, unparalleled. You changed my life as a young man running around in New York, uptown. You know, the clothes, the culture, the vibe. Uh, you made us look good, you made us feel good. You showed us what style and taste was on a lot of levels, introduced us to, to Gucci, introduced us to so many great brands. You're an amazing, amazing designer, and we salute you, I salute you. And I just want to say congratulations, man. You know what I'm saying? Much love, baby. Big Dad. Congratulations, Dapper Dan, for your Maverick Lifetime Achievement Award. You so deserve it. What you've done for fashion as a visionary has permeated global fashion. And I so respect you. I think that you deserve more than this award. You deserve every award. You should deserve everything. Congratulations. And so have many wonderful moments I've had with you. Dapper Dan, congratulations on your Lifetime Achievement Award, the Maverick Award, you deserve it. Keep up the great work, Dapper Dan. Make, 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 make a clap to this. To show Join our appreciation for your support. giving a huge make, make, hand make, clap, make clap, clap to Mr. Dapper to Dan for the H HFR Lifetime Achievement Maverick Award. <laughs> make a clap to this. Make, make, a clap, make a clap to this. Make a, make a clap to this. Make, 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 a, make a clap to this. Tonight is so amazing for me. So amazing for me. It's like when I first, when I first met Brandis, and she was the first one after 30 years to invite me to come to an occasion and do a speaking engagement. That was before I had a partnership with Gucci. That was before I had a book deal with Random House. That was before I had a movie deal with Sony. And it's just so amazing. I never thought, I had no idea that I'd ever be recognized uh, after you know 30 years. And I would love to stand here and tell a fashion story but my story is a Harlem story that just happens to include fashion. As a young man, I didn't want to be stuck on the corner, so I was really looking for something to do. And I wanted to do something that I know that was enriching and transformative for the people in my community, and that's why, and that's why I chose fashion. But I, I had no idea that it would materialize into what it was today. In fact, you know, when I first started seeing different brands copy some of the things that I did through the years, I just said, that's what they always do. We have no voice. There's nothing I could do about it. And then time passed, time passed. The next thing I know, social, the event of social media took place. I had to learn all about social media. Then one day, somebody said something to me, you know they got black Twitter. Black Twitter heard about what they did to you. <laughs> Black Twitter coming for them. <laughs> I said, what are you talking about? My son said, what are you talking about? What? So my son explained everything to me. And I said, oh, that's what they're doing? They said, yeah, Gucci's offering you a deal. I said, Delaney, come on, quit playing with me. He said, yeah, Gucci come offering you a deal. So I tell Jelani, I'm going to make you an offer you can't refuse. Tell him to come to Harlem. Tell him to come to my brownstone and sit down. And they came. And they sat down. 
and they made a deal. I said, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm not going to be window dressing. You know I grew up doing the Malcolm era. Don't come with me and I got window dressing stuff. You know I ain't going for it. No, they did not say collaboration, Pop. They said partnership. I said, okay. <laughs> partnership? Yeah, partnership. I said, all right. Let's see what they're talking about. Then I met Marco Bazzari. I met Alexandro. And I said, okay, what's up with these guys? Then I started to read their stories and see how similar. I was so surprised to see their background. You know, my feelings is that for us as people of color to raise ourselves up, we have to have a belief. But a belief has to be counted with consciousness, you know? And that's what Gucci brought to the table. I said, these people are conscious. I know it's a bottom line. It has to be a bottom line. They recognize what I'm doing, but they could have found a way to, to work around it. But the level of consciousness had changed. They realized that people of color could make great contributions to every game we play. You know? So as we went on, as we going along, I've never been to any major events, so I say, okay, let's see what's happening. So they invited me to Italy, and I went to, you know, I went to one of the runway shows. I say, okay, sounds serious. Come here, then they took me to uh, the Grammys. I say, wow, it's sounding more serious. <laughs> then they took me to the Met. I say, now it's getting too serious here. <laughs> <laughs> Something's really happening here, you know. And they accepted me, and they took it like. You know, this is truly a family, man. This is truly what they're trying to do. There's a change that has come. You know, and tonight, like, I saw so many young people come up to me and they say, yeah, I'm a journalist from this media and I'm a journalist from that media and I'm a journalist from this media. When I was in college in 1972, like, there was only three black journalists in journalism school in the United States because that was my first passion, to be a journalist. It was only three and my hero, was Earl Caldwell. You know, Earl Caldwell was a journalist who uh, went out his way to defend uh, the information that he had concerned when he um, was, you know, did the write-up on the, on the Panther Party. So when I look around today, I say, well, it's happening all over. When I see journalists here that have these contracts with big media and this thing that's taking place with me, with Gucci, I say, there's a change that's taking place, so we just got to keep on pushing. We just got to keep on moving. We just got to keep on stomping. We just got to keep on letting them know that we can do this because they ain't going to let us in because they got to know we can do this. And we've been doing this, man. And, and Brandis has been amazing, man. She's been so amazing, man. Because I told her when I started this thing here, I say, um, let me tell you something. I grew up during the 60s and, you know, a real racist, you know. You know, there was a lot of racial tension. So I always felt that, you know, we're not going to get, they're not opening no doors for us. And I remember telling Brandis at that first occasion, I said, we have to create a staircase for ourselves. We can't, con we can't worry about them going up their staircase because if we create a staircase for ourselves, we can go up and down it. If they create a staircase for us, they let us up and then kick us down. You know? So that's why we had, that's why the level of consciousness had to change. And Gucci is leading the way that changed it, man. And I'm thankful for that. But more than anything else, I'm thankful for Brandis and all the people who have been responsible for getting where I am. And Black Twitter, I love y'all. <laughs> I came in the door, I said it before, I never let the